2016, ASA team members met and they decided to find out what the future of agriculture will be in the region and also find out the gaps or challenges which has been hindering agriculture within the semi-arid region of Ghana. So um, after the TSP workshop, um, they identified that climate smart water management was an issue. Um, and as a result of that, they proposed the scenario-based capacity building um, project as a response to solving the water management issues in semi-arid Ghana. And the aim of this workshop was to help build the capacity of farmers engaged in irrigation farming. We went with two main objectives, to provide networking platforms for people within the agriculture workshop, which are farmers, um, technical officers, and input dealers. And another main output that we seek to find at the end of the workshop was to come up with what we call the farming advisories. This is a one consolidated document which has the challenges that the farmers are facing, the proposed solution, and also the institutions which they can go to in, in case they encounter such challenges. We collaborated mainly with the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority, where we brought in a representative to help um, establish a unified farming association, that's the Laura and London Farming Association. We are using the model to train farmers to be in groups so they can have access to inputs, they can have access to extension services, they can have access to gaps trainings and other activities from donors and uh, people that might work were wanting to work with them. I took them to the LI uh, 2230, which is mandatory. Um, actually, it was established in 2016 and it came into force around uh, 16th of May 2016. So every irrigation farmer is supposed to have an idea and work with this LI. And indeed, after the training, it was, it was, it was, it was manifested. You know, it showed that indeed farmers had learned something from the discussions. And I be so so sad, cause I say, "Ye unkuya fuano, ye be kam, ye be ye ano ba kum." Na ye dia dia bana, ebi afi we dia ba we ya so. Say ye be ton, e wo say ni na ye ano kro. Say rubber boy, ye be ton ni twenty series. Sa na ubi ya so so be decide. Say ye be ton ni twenty series. Na enya sa. Now, we have 15 cities, now we have 20 cities. And we have to embrace it. As a program has actually benefited me a lot. It has actually built my capacity. The trainings that we have gone through, it, is, it has actually added a lot of knowledge to my previous knowledge that I have from my college when I was trained as an extension officer. So with ASA program, it's actually going to help me a lot. And it's even helping me even in the field currently. In moving forward, uh, innovatively, we thought that the best way for farmers to receive this information was by creating what we call the Climate Advisory Resource Centers. These are specific centers um, located within the Ministry of Food and Agriculture offices, as well as two specific input dealer shops to be able to pass on specific information, training videos, um, to educate farmers on all these type of um, activities, including choosing uh, the crops to grow for the dry season, what type of uh, soil that you should look out for, the chemicals to apply, the seeds to apply, and the likes. And we believe that farmers actually watching it through training videos with an extension officer, a technical officer, providing that kind of advice to them will be best in terms of them making use of that information than just speaking orally to them without them seeing what is actually happening on the ground. Looking at those videos, it will refresh my mind in a way so that I will be focused because as I'm going and I've watched a lot of videos, not only on one crop, so many varieties of crops and types of crops. So when I go to the fold, whether it's maize or it's tomatoes, okra, any crop at all, I'll have a background knowledge on it and I'm going to actually do my best for my farmers. The resource centre that has been provided is actually going to help us a lot because we're just taking through some of the videos on the TV where we can learn ways of cultivating certain crops. For instance, we had the opportunity of looking at how to cultivate maize. And there we got to see some of the 
deficiencies as in the color of the maize, what you can check in the complexion of the maize to tell whether the maize is lacking phosphorus or any of these nutrients. And I think for me that is important. workshop and then say, we created a mobile app as well to be able to facilitate the exchange of information between um, extension agents and researchers. One of the reasons why we did this mobile app was we had a lot of information on how extension officers and development workers are unable to receive research information that is done in the areas. And we thought that it would be innovative for us to actually compile all this information and put it on, on one platform, which is a mobile app, so that uh, extension officers, researchers, and the likes can have uh, specific information relating to what they are actually doing, mainly for planning uh, purposes as well. And this mobile app, we call it Adaptation Hub, mainly because it's climate change adaptation, that is our focus area, and that's what we want to help the stakeholders with. As part of the Climate Advisory Resource Centers, we also provided the extension offices with a mobile phone. The farmers are expected to call on the mobile phone for farm advice. We're given numbers, this, the, the, the contact number of the office, where we can call an extension officer who will be in charge of the resource centre. Then we can have access to information about whatever is happening in, as, in, as regards challenges we are facing in our gardens during the dry season. It is expected that the Founders Committee members, who can also be referred to as the lead farmers, are going to their communities, are going to their schemes to go and educate their other colleagues members who are there. Access intervention is, 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 is come at the right time and I'm sure that um, with this intervention going forward, um, irrigation development in Laura and then the Nandam area would, 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 would be given a facelift. Um, most of the time, some of us have always bemoaned the fact that most organizations, most CSOs, most NGOs do not pay attention to irrigation. And so this intervention where irrigators are targeted, I think is, is, is welcoming. It's heartwarming and then we want to say thank you to Asa for this intervention.